what we do here is go back, 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 back. And what's up, everybody? You're here again. We're here again for another episode of the Older Gaming Podcast. This is episode four, where we're going to talk about some more video games and nerd stuff. Um, I am Older Gaming, and with me are our two co co hosts, Ken O'Crisco and Sharky and the Funky Bunch. What's up? Okay, so this week. Um, we're going to go over some Injustice 2 stuff, we're going to talk about Star Wars, and we're going to talk about COD, and that's going to be like the main main subjects of this week. And we're going to just start in with Injustice 2 here in a second, but um, we've been gone for like a month, I know. There hasn't really been anything too juicy in the, in the news, there's been some cool releases like Mass Effect and stuff, but if you've been on the stream, you have definitely been seeing me play those games. Um, we also picked up Diablo 3, still on the siege thing. What else? Swotor. Crisco got a computer, so now he can be an adult gaming gamer now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. So yeah, there's been a there's been a lot of stuff. We're gonna try to keep the YouTube and the the podcasting going on here every week. No more being lazy. I'm gonna make that a promise. <clears throat> All right, so let's get right into it. With Injustice 2, um, I think it I think this came out yesterday. The Joker, a couple of days ago, two days ago, the Joker was rele released, I guess? The the footage was, was released like was of the Joker? Yeah, he was kind of like leaked. For, he was like leaked that he was like rumored to be in the game because they hadn't done anything official. And then they finally like came out with this gameplay to confirm that he was in it. Air quotes, air know. quotes around leaked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, conveniently, conveniently placed. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know you wanted to talk a little bit more about Injustice Two. Here's what I'm thinking so far: it's not going to be as good as Injustice One. There, it's getting super hyped up, and I'm the the only thing that can save them is a really good story. Hopefully the story is really good because they're they're throwing everything except for the kitchen sink in this thing, man. They're, every single superhero is going to be in here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, from a DC fan standpoint, like you've got to be pumped about the game because they've got every like every every superhero and like every hero's like main villain, um, if not multiple, like for the game. I'm still like iffy on the whole like 
cr like crafting and loot system that they've got in place. Like, I don't know. I feel like for a fighting game, it just doesn't make sense. Right. Um, I feel like that'll be probably the game breaker for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like they're just kind of going all out and, and hoping that it works. I honestly well, forgot that they were doing that. The loot yeah. system. Was, something might save it though, just a little bit. At least it looks really, really good. Like the overall graphics over on it looks pretty awesome though. So, and then like the special effects along with their like special moves and stuff like that look pretty sweet though. So yeah, it might they, save it a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I mean, even with them being cool, they're there are only a certain amount of them and they may you know you know they may make unlockables to where you have more special moves and and finishers and stuff like that but it, you, you can only go so far is there going to be dlc have they said anything about that um i mean you'd have to assume that yeah, there probably will be i mean you'd have to assume that there'd be dlc in, in something like this like they're gonna i mean they have a ridiculous roster and i think that's what you're gonna see more is that they're gonna be kind of pumping out dlc but just more on like a character roster basis than anything uh, maybe a few new like maps but that'd be my guess yeah but then again like maps it's it's a left and right 2d moving fighter it doesn't have that right. much difference to it it's just like an aesthetic thing is giving more well, i was gonna say like well i was gonna say even too like the thing about like the game being polished like I, for a game like this i expect a game like this to be insanely polished only for the reason like you said like they're on a 2d plane like the character models and everything are all in 3d but the game itself is 2d and all they have to do is worry about the transition animations and the fighting animation and then because the background like there's a few I, I'm sure there's a few objects on every map that are, like, interactable where you right. can, like... I think I saw one in the Joker's thing where he, like, threw someone into, like, a TV panel or something. Um, which, of course, is, like, awfully... It's incredibly brutal. But there's not a lot that goes into it outside of just the fact that the two dudes beat the shit out of each other. Well, I'm expecting also, with you saying, like, interactivity in the maps, I'm expecting for them to have, like... You know how in the first one it was... You started here... But if you got all the way to like the right side of the map and you did a, a certain move, it would push them through to that map and it would like transfer them over to another map part of the map. I, I would assume that's, that they're going to do that again. That's what I was talking about, like with with the transition moves, like, yeah. or, like the oh, transition yeah. scenes, like when they're when they're going from like stage to stage in the same fight. Right. Yeah, I mean they've definitely shown some of that stuff. And, and I know some, I mean, some of it, it looks great. It really does. But I feel like it's just it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. For what you were saying about the DLC, because I looked it up real quick, they said they confirmed that uh, NetherRealm is going to take a more aggressive approach when it comes to Injustice 2 post-launch content. So, and then uh, that they're planning on supporting Injustice 2 for a longer period of time by releasing more playable characters as DLC. So... Than it's done for its previous title so they're trying to make it span out for a longer time to where people aren't getting bored so they're gonna spread out the dlcs apparently does it say anything about like adding more story because especially no. for injustice one the story was so good you would hope that with those new characters that they're introducing they're also going to introduce like more story with why why they're not getting there right away or you know stuff like that or right. the, yeah, like a tie-in. Yeah, it because, just mostly talks about the them expanding the DLC to where they try to net more people and keep their attention for a little bit longer. And then it talks about the new gear and loot system, which will allow players to collect new customization items after every fight. And that way, it would uh, invest. People will invest months and time, uh, months and months of their time into it to try to unlock all the com customization rewards and stuff. But it doesn't say anything about story modes or anything like that like spending like the backstories on each character or anything like that yeah um going off of that going off of what i had said before about like dlc i was really excited when i f saw dark side was going to be in it because he's one of my favorite villains just because mm -hmm. he's so powerful and it's like you know the apocalypse when he comes that would have been a cool idea for dark side because you don't ever i'm i'm sure if there when you go through the story 
he's going to be one of the later villains, but I think it would be cooler if he wasn't even in the first game, the first part of the game. He was like a DLC, and they added story to, you know, Darkseid coming in and trying to take over planet Earth or whatever. That would have been a cool idea. But. Yeah, but then I could, I could see him, if they're trying to make sure people are... Uh staying longer and stuff like that they were also talking about incorporating like pay to unlock models so that might be something they do with dark sea you'd be like oh well in order to get him you might have to pay to unlock him unless you get that random uh lock unlock or whatever like that for the loot stuff i don't know but they're there it's possible that they might incorporate pay to unlock for it which would suck if they have certain characters where you have to buy so they get a little bit more money out of the game from it yeah yeah i I know the one thing, like, I'm okay with that as long as it's not pay to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's the one thing, if I, if I remember correctly, when they first announced that they were going to have, like, a mic microtransaction system, uh, yeah. it came right after they announced the um, armor and weapons system as well. So I, and, mm -hmm. and a bunch of people, like, jumped to the conclusion right away that they were going to do, like, a pay to win where, like, if you just spend, like, 50 bucks, you'll get a shit ton of items. Like and it'll put you way ahead of everyone else, and I think they said that the pay to win stuff is primarily aesthetic, or the the pay the pay things and, and the DLCs that they'll have at launch, especially, are are basically just going to be like aesthetic items and things like they that. All, they always say that though. Every single game says it's only going to be aesthetic, and then next thing you know, a new character comes out to where you have to buy it, or a new gun has to come out. Oh, for like, oh no, I'm I'm that. okay with them. Yeah, I mean I'm okay with them charging for characters. Mm -hmm. because you still have to learn how to play every character like what I'm not okay with is is if they're because if they say it's not pay to win I, I from my reading of that article they weren't going to include weapons and armor in the the packs because you get those just for doing like doing the actual fights mm -hmm. um, like I'm cool with them making it say like cool like spend two dollars or like spend a dollar get this character like whatever the case may be but like what I don't want them to do is like spend five dollars, get this character, his like legendary armor set, and, and his legendary weapon. Now, granted, you still have to get good enough at the game that you know his combos and things like that, or her combos. But like, I feel like having the extra gear like automatically gives you a little bit of a like up, a boost. Yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna pick up Injustice too. I we'll see about the DLC. I'm kind of excited, but I'm trying not to get like overly excited because I really enjoyed Injustice 1 and I want to really enjoy this one too, but there's a lot of hype going with this game and I'm trying not to delve into the hype. A lot of people are hating on it already and it hasn't even come out or anything like that and people are they're not even looking forward to it because I was reading a lot of comments on the couple articles I've read and everybody's just hating on everything about it. Says, it's going to be nowhere near as good as Injustice 1 or anything like that. And so, I don't know, we'll we'll have to see on how well it does. Because I know a lot of people hate how Joker looks, because he looks all emo oh, yeah. and like a Jared Leto type of looking Joker. Not even. Not so. even Jared Leto. I think he looks worse than Jared Leto's Joker. Yeah. Well, kind of, he kind of, I guess, has the facial features, but then like he has like the Justin Bieber like swooped over like emo hair and like, I don't know. It's, he looks stupid. Yeah, I the one thing I, I I mean, but I mean, even basing a lot of the character models off of what's going on, like in the like in cinema and stuff right now with the different characters, because for example, like Deadshot looks exactly like um looks exactly like almost exactly like Deadshot from Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Yeah. Oh. So, so, I mean, I feel like they're playing off of what's relevant because I think if anyone's not really super familiar with the, the comics and stuff, like, they're not going to appreciate the, like, the classic looks of the characters anyway. No. So they might as well pick things that people know. But I agree. The Joker looked weird. He looks like a... I don't know. He looks kind of like a mix between, like, Jared Leto's Joker and, like, Heath Ledger's Joker where he's, like, kind of, like, having, like, a mental breakdown, but he's still kind of there he looks cracked out yeah i like his moves though i think his moves look yeah. really really were jokery pretty much is how yeah. how i can explain and then that. The, after he finished the 
last that character that was in that little trailer or whatever like that where he pulls out throws out all the cards or whatever and has his Joker card that's pretty cool too yeah yeah I feel like he's gonna be he's gonna be a very like highly touted character but not not one obviously because he's the Joker and, yeah. and why wouldn't you want to play with him but also too like it just looks like his move set is so fast like he might, I'm guessing he doesn't do as much damage, but I feel like you're gonna be able to, if once you learn how to string his combos together, like he just, he attacks so fast. Cause then in the first one or whatever like that, didn't he have like a pill or something like, or what was that? I don't even remember. Yeah, I think he had like, cause how they, cause you know, cause obviously like him fighting Superman, he has no superpowers, but then Superman obviously is a fucking monster, has superpowers at his ass, but uh, like I think they gave him like some sort of pill or like oh yeah 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 Batman comes up with like a super pill or something that makes it so they can compete with the superheroes yeah Yeah, that part I really hated about the whole thing but I mean it makes sense you it's kind of a cop-out is is what it is but you you kind of need it when you're facing Harley Quinn versus this versus Superman. Like Superman would just destroy was, Harley Quinn. Be a destroyer, yeah. I was going to say like like how do you like I like because if you think about it from like a actual story standpoint, like it's always one-on-one combat and like like no no normal person is going to be able to beat a superhero in one-on-one combat or like no one with like outpowered unless you're Batman. Maybe that. Yeah. Yeah, unless you're maybe Batman. He's a pay to win player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is the definition of pay to win. <laughs> All right, let's him in Iron Man. Let's move on from this one. I I wouldn't say Iron Man because Iron Man it had, just has the suit. He doesn't have the the time put into like the martial arts and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that's shoots, no. Pew pew oh. blasters. Pew pew. Pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to pray um i thought it came out i saw someone had reviewed it like ign reviewed it or something but of course it's ign so they got it before it came out and this is a game i i don't remember which e3 i saw the trailer at and they're they're you know playing the trailer again i think it looks really interesting i haven't really looked into like any of the mechanical stuff of the game i've only pretty much looked at the cinematic trailer where he's like his eye gets is starts out with really red, and then he goes through the day, and then he wakes up, and he looks at his eye again in the mirror, and it's even more red, and he goes through the exact same day, and then he gets back, you know, and it's the same thing, and every day his eye gets more red and more red, and then eventually he wakes up and he's in some, like, testing facility or something like that. So that, I thought that was really good, a really good way to have a, a cinematic trailer. It really caught my attention. And I'm thinking about trying this game. I have no idea what like the mechanics are or what what the story actual story is or anything like that. Other than that cinematic trailer, though. How people are kind of like describing it, like some of the people I guess that like tested it or played it over it. They're saying it's like Bioshock in space. That's what they I said. I never played Bioshock, Compa- but it says, com- oh, it says comparisons to Bioshock in space. So, yeah, I've never played Bioshock either, so I don't know. It looks really pretty too. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it looks good. Did now did they review the entire game or did they review like the beta? See, I, I know I don't know. Because I know they did like a closed beta, what was it, I think last week or maybe a week and a half or two weeks ago. Um apparently you where, like a like a one hour like review. Hmm. Like a one hour preview of the game. I don't think like, that I I'm like I'm sure IGN got like a more than one hour uh, playthrough. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can no, play. I, it. I, yeah, you can play I, a demo of the game's opening hour now. So right now you can play it for the the opening. No, hour I thought I, I thought team. they ran like a full like a full closed like it was closed beta, but and they, you couldn't play like the whole game. But I thought yeah. they they sent something out that like unlocked a ton of the game that you where you could actually do like multiplayer and like and everything like that because I saw a bunch of gameplay from it. But I saw a lot of clips on like IGN and, and GameSpot and things like that that were showcasing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'll probably I'm gonna try the the one hour thing. I'm gonna download that tonight actually. 
Yeah. And that'll be the deciding factor if I buy it or not. Because I'm going to buy it on... I don't even know if it comes out on console, but I'm going to for sure buy it on PC because I want to try and see how good it looks in 1080p high graphics. Yeah, it's probably... <laughs> So like, I mean, obviously, and for a game like that too, I feel like when it's always a game that's going to kind of push the push the graphical envelope, not from necessarily like a like a hardware and, and like a hardware standpoint, because it may not require like the top, like the top of the line stuff, but like for a game that's going to really push the like the creativity side of it, like definitely want to get that in, in all its glory. Who developed this? I'm pretty sure Bethesda developed it, right? Um, oh, also, it's a remake. I forgot about that. This game yeah, came yeah. out in 2006 originally. But they said it has nothing to do with that original no, game. No, it's, it's like a relaunch. It's like the it's like Spider Man. It's like the Spider Man movies, but for game. They've relaunched it like mm -hmm. three times now, and nothing, right. none of them have any tie-in. Or maybe Bethesda yeah, did the original one. Developers are Arcane Studios and Human Head Studios. Maybe I was... Where did I see Bethesda, though? Yeah, it's Arcane's. It is the one that made it. Arcane. Hmm. Maybe Bethesda made the original. Uh, Dishonored 2, publisher Bethesda. Oh. Oh, they're publishing so, it. Yeah. It's and... saying that they will probably not distribute review copies of Prey. Oh, so. then maybe... IGN only did the one hour trial then. Yeah. Because usually they don't make exceptions for anyone if they're going to say that. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, cool. That's something to look forward to. Uh, next, let's talk about the NES. And recently, the. Who's this guy? Some spokesperson or something, or. CEO or something of Nintendo um, was talking about why the NES isn't getting more copies made because they they originally had it out last holiday season and they the the sales the demand for it was really high and they they were saying they weren't going to make any more and then you know later they came out and they made a couple of more not too many more, but the the reason they said that, um, that this guy says that it was only for a holiday. It was like a holiday special or whatever, that they were only going to sell it for that holiday and they were only going to make that many, that many those many things, those that many of them. Which I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. Because they, they said that they originally were only going to do like a million or something like that and I think they ended up with like 2.1 million 2.3 million shipped so they went a lot farther than what they said they were going to do apparently what their initial thing is but with it being that popular I mean I don't I don't understand I guess they don't want to take away from the switch but then with them see I I think it's kind of the opposite I think for them I think they look at it as 2.1 million makes it not worth it so, like, how much? How much was the console? It was only sixty dollars. Yeah, I mean that's that's your average game. So, like, think about it from like a like just like a, a regular video game standpoint. Like, unless you're a AAA studio in this day and age, which I mean, obviously Nintendo is like, but that, I feel like that's more of like a side note. But unless you're a AAA studio that like has the major funding behind it, like you're probably not going to develop. A sequel or to a game, or like continue developing a game if it only sells two million copies. Like it, it's that doesn't mean that it was a failure, but it's probably also not worth the time at that point. So I think for them, for it being Nintendo, they, I feel like they more looked at it as like we'll send it out in send it out in the Christmas season and see what we end up getting like overall. And if it really pushes, then we'll keep going. But like I feel like for them, I know they kind of bottleneck themselves but i don't think the demand was as high as they thought it was going to be i know a well, lot of people still really? want them but i thought it you know, was no, no, no. pretty high they, they sold all, i would say they sold 2.3 million i mean they sold a lot more than they were expecting to sell so they, it did way better which is why it's weird that they're discontinuing it because they did yeah. way better than what they expected and then he was like oh well we don't have unlimited resources we're moving on to other things that we have going on 
and then now you got all these like sharks coming out there and where they're getting the last few uh consoles or whatever like that and then they're selling them on like ebay for like triple the price so people yeah. get it so they have that little console with the 30 games on it which is it's getting insane now so yeah i, I think that him saying that kind of makes me that think hurt? that they shouldn't have even came out with this at all like yeah it was yeah. successful and everything but he's basically copping out by saying there's other stuff we got to do we're, we're focused on other stuff this isn't this isn't something that can make us an endless amount of money like the switch is it just seemed like it was just a, a one-year thing that they wanted to do to try to hold them off until they got other stuff out to make some more money. So they just wanted that money real quick and cranked it out real quick, and then now they're just continuing and they're done with it. Yeah, that kind of pisses me off, too, that there are people... Of course there are people out there that that are selling at an outrageous price, but I didn't even think about that until you said something like that, and that, that just yeah. annoys the shit out of me that that's happening with this. Because I want one. And clearly I'm yeah, not going to get one because I'm not paying $300 for it. Maybe though, I mean, maybe they'll bring it back as like a recurring like holiday special where like every holiday season they just like, they crank out another like couple million and, and then you can scoop them up at the end of the year. I, I mean, I feel like that could be a cool, like a, a good move for them if that's like, if that's kind of more the route they want to take where it's like short first. Yeah, people are selling them for like 250 bucks on eBay right now for that little thing with pre, uh, with like three or 30 games pre-installed. And they could have, uh, why? Did, and it's not like, cause those they made all those games, right? They're they're yeah. they developed all those games and stuff like that, and they're giving those away, and they have so many more that they could, you know, charge another sixty dollars for another thirty, and it would. It would be nothing. Yeah. It comes. It comes with a lot of like the really popular, popular like old games like right. the original Zelda, uh, Metroid, Super Mario Bros, Kirby's Adventure, Pac World. So I mean, it, it has a lot of the sweet, really old games. That's why it was so popular and why people were trying to take it off the shelf. So it's just stupid that they only have it for that little bit. Whatever. I, I wonder if they they kind of found out that unless they're going to produce it in like the like tens of millions of consoles that it's really not as cheap as they were selling it for. That's one thing I could see because I feel like I mean sure it's it, it doesn't have the most high tech high tech or like technology anymore, especially compared to what we have nowadays. But like. Is it really only worth? Is like, can they really build it that efficiently at l under sixty dollars that it's worth it for them to like build it and ship it and sell it? Here's my oh, question for it. that. Then, what was it originally priced at? Was it? Uh, because if it if it was priced at like something like a hundred or maybe even two hundred dollars, I I don't think that that's even possible. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, I mean, if it's uh, got a high price point initially, but I'm saying like if it's down to if they're trying like if they were only selling for sixty dollars, yeah, it was like, fifty eight ninety nine original. There's yeah. no way they're losing money on this then. Yeah, so originally it was fifty eight ninety nine, and then now I saw one on eBay for uh, four hundred and one bucks. So that's insane. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just crazy people trying to outbid each other to have it. But like what I'm saying is like for them maybe they look at it though and like what they're putting into it by the time they ship the consoles overseas like by the time they ship them wherever they need to go like and they they outfit everything like they are not running a high enough margin they're going to they're going to cut it. Mm -hmm. That's and, a, I wish I would have picked one up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel the same. So it's all business. Mm. So next thing, we're going to go off the, the the video game path here, but we're going to stay in the nerd zone. We're going to talk... Well, I guess it's kind of related to video games because it's Battlefront 2 um, released a photo of Kylo Ren and Rey, and basically it says this is what their outfits are going to be in The Last Jedi. I think they look cool. I mean, they're 
there's not really much more we can say than that other than I'm super excited about Star Wars <laughs> for the movie <laughs> and I'm super excited about Battlefront 2 because I have had Battlefront since it came out and yeah the DLC kind of sucked for it they were just kind of grabbing random people and I'm excited that there's going to be a lot more heroes and stuff in the Battlefront but yeah I mean, there's the cinematic trailer they had for it looked awesome. Yeah, it looked absolutely fantastic, and I think I, I like the direction they're going with the story. It, I feel like it's just it's a cool like it's a cool take on kind of a more like it's a cool take on the story where like you're, they're gonna look at it from the not so typical perspective of the dark side, like coming like coming from that side. I think is gonna be really cool. The thing with this is. There, Battlefront 2 is covering right after the Death Star blows up, right? That's where the story starts, or that's where the trailer is. And it's like how the... What are they called? Um, the New Empire, or whatever they are. What, what are people going to do that don't play video games? What are they going to do? Uh, I mean, well, I... I mean, I'm sure, I think I even saw a thing, though, where it was, like, more books and things are going to come out. People kind of out there that don't want to read books, though. They want to watch the movies. Well, well, then, I don't know, I don't have a good answer for you. Watch the cinematic trailers on on YouTube when, like, a year after the game comes out. Are you screen sharing so everyone can yeah. see? So you can see what the, kind of see what it looks like. I hope Kylo Ren just keeps his helmet off. There was no point for him to have one in the first place. It was a, I like the idea. It was a cool concept. And like you knew where they were going with it because they wanted to kind of pay homage to or homage to Darth Vader. Darth Vader. But it, I don't know. It was unique. I think the... So, going into this... I, I love don't don't get me wrong I loved I'm blanking on the fucking what was that one called? Force Return. <laughs> the For yeah. no the Force Awakens. Yeah. Um, I go. loved it, but like when I first saw Kylo Ren's face, I was kind of like, oh, that you know that's not that scary. But now thinking about Anakin, I guess that kind of makes sense because they're both kind of like pretty boys or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think it would have been cool if they would have had him in. Knights of the Old Republic, if you've ever played it, and in Star Wars The Old Republic, when you you can choose to be light side or dark side, and when you fall to the dark side, your face gets more pale, and you get scars and stuff, and you look like you're on the dark side. I think it would have been cool to have him look more like that, but I guess it's not that important. I think it would have been it would have made him look a little bit more, you know, bad, bad guyish. Thing menacing and stuff but what whatever we're yeah. not we're not getting into that <laughs> See, we, if we wanted to, to go into that we could spend another 45 minutes just talking about yeah, star for wars sure. sure um staying outside of the video game realm and getting away from the more nerdy stuff um this is a tweet that hurt my heart uh netflix has already gotten rid of my favorite show chuck and now they're gonna get now they're gonna get rid of another one of my favorite shows, Bob's Burgers. It's leaving in May, and uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to binge and hold the memories in my mind. Yeah. Do you think, do you think Amazon will go and pick them up then? <laughs> that would be funny. I hope. I that would be awesome. I feel like Amazon did that with most of the shows that Netflix has lost in the past couple of years. They just went in and scooped them up. And... Well, it, what it is is Netflix and Fox are having like a little tiff is what it is. And then so Fox, slowly all Fox's shows are coming off. Like they took off Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, they took they off Firefly. They better not tuck off Philly. They better they not also, take off Always in Philly or else I'm going to so, die. Because I, I looked more up into this, okay? So like now they're going to start – they. Bob Burgers is being taken off. American Dad, Dad is also leaving. So right now they're going to pull the last four seasons of American Dad, and then they're going to leave the uh, what? Because there's ten, so they're going to leave the first six, and they're going to slowly start removing those two. 
along with a whole bunch of other Fox shows and stuff like that. So they have, a, some, for some reason, something's going on with Netflix and Fox. Uh, I know Fox is a shareholder in Hulu, so they actually have some part in Hulu where they have mm. no part of Netflix. So they're moving a lot of their stuff to Hulu to where you can just watch it from Hulu that way. And that's just because they own part of it. And Netflix, the only thing they get from Netflix is just because you have to pay in order for Netflix to uh, have be able to stream their shows and stuff like that. So that's why it's all slowly starting to come off of it. So what it sounds like you're saying is it's time to get Hulu, people. Fuck yes. Netflix. Because, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean... I, there there have been plenty of good things on Netflix, but I feel like their movie pool is pretty much garbage. It's all secondhand, not very big budgeted movies, and then they'll get like one or two big ticket movies every once in a while. And it's just like, I, I hate looking for movies on Netflix because I feel like you never find anything good. When you're going through, especially after like you get through that first two pages or the first two lines it's like everything has less than a three star and if you're like me i don't watch anything on netflix if it doesn't have more than two and a half stars nothing oh they're taking scrubs off too all nine seasons oh man yeah scrubs good luck charlie is coming off oh my gosh and a ton of movies yeah they, they definitely like in the past couple of years, I've definitely noticed like all of their big budget movies have really fallen off. Like they don't get anything substantial anymore. The only thing they mm -hmm. get worth watching, I guess, right when it comes out is because they have an agreement, like a ma like a massive agreement with Disney. They get all of the yeah. really good Marvel movies that come out. But like, yeah, they can they, they except can Star Wars. New they, they, they oh, that's not Marvel. What the fuck movies. am I talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because with that with that agreement with Disney, they can stream the new release Disney movies or whatever like that. But they don't come out. That, I that, feel like when it comes out on DVD, it is not out on Netflix for another like two months. I guess. Well, no, I mean that makes sense. Like if you think about it from a business standpoint, though, it makes sense. Yeah. Like they're not. Gonna, I mean, yeah, but they're not going to let you stream it right away. Right. They want you. They want to people to go out the to video, the store and yeah, pay yeah. for it. Yeah. Don't I'm not going to do that, though, movies. because I'm not that much invested into the Marvel movies. I might mm -hmm. go see one or two at the movie theater, but I'm not going to buy the Marvel movies. Unless it's really good, like the first Avengers and Iron Man 3 and 1. Those were good. Yes. Okay, let's get into the second big ticket item. Um, Call of Duty World War II. Yay! I'm going to just start Good off with that. saying this. I think they're trying too hard to hype this up too. And it's not... Because Call of Duty World at War was my first Call of Duty game. And it was so good. And I remember playing with Sharky all the time. Mm -hmm. After school. Well, on the weekends because I wasn't allowed to play during the week but that, i mean those were some of the first times i had ever like stayed up until like four in the morning playing video games was call of duty world at war 2 world war world at war gosh i'm like oh i'm looking at world war 2 and i'm mixing the two games up so world at war <laughs> was really it was really good game great game and i just they're gonna have a a social uh, th this is the dumbest thing they're gonna have a social area a destiny like social area for call it like, that's just the lobby just keep the lobby you don't need to like be able to run your character around when you're sitting in lobby it's call of duty like they've got they've got a good thing going for them <sighs> why that i really don't like that nah. Uh, that that I don't know about. Right now, that's just rumored. So they're not even one hundred percent sure. That's oh, it did say rumored. I didn't read this entire yeah. article, as I never yeah. do read. No, the no, no, no. believe me. So I'm the biggest, probably. I don't out of the three of us. I'm probably the biggest Call of Duty dude because I have every single Call of Duty. I play it almost daily, usually, other than the last couple, three, four weeks because I've been a little MIA a little bit. So I'm hardcore Call of Duty, okay, and it's been a dying franchise for a long 
time because they're just not listening to any of the games. Ghosts. They're just completely yeah. They're just yeah, exactly. Ghosts was the last semi decent. Oh my god. No, it, it what? It Ghost was not not decent at all. It was terrible. Or it was the first that's terrible downfall. one? Yeah, that, yeah, was, that was the was first terrible, terrible one. one. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's that was downfall, okay? So, and then now we're at where we are now where you have Modern Warfare Remastered along with uh Infinite Warfare or whatever the that trash game is. So, the reason why they paired those together is so they can make some money because Modern Warfare Remastered was obviously popular. So, they're, what they're doing it, they're doing it in three year spans, okay? So they already had it set for three years that they were doing this space thing. And then they were seeing how it was, even though we were telling them, hey, no, this is stupid. You don't want to do the space thing. We hate it. You're going to lose so many gamers. They continued because they already had it planned out for the three years because they're given each company and each company usually makes it within three years, even though the uh, title releases yearly. So now what they are saying is now for the next three years it's going to be back to the roots so it's going back to original call of duty boots on the ground we're not in space no fucking jetpacks none of that stupid stuff to where we're like bouncing around you have to worry about people coming up behind you from god knows where from under the map six miles above the map wherever they're coming from <clears throat> so now it's originally boots on the ground it's all about your aim you're going back to the roots. World War II, you're going back to the old style guns and stuff like that. They're talking about the story mode. No health regen. Literally, you have to watch every bullet that you get hit with, which I think is cool because that's like yeah. the original Call of Duty where you had to get med packs and stuff like that to get your health back. Coming so from I a think... Siege standpoint of view, I do like the that they're taking out regen. But if they don't have single fire semi-automatic weapons as the main majority of weapons i'm out i don't hey, well, want they said, they said I, they're taking the weapons from that era so it's going to be like the actual world war ii but, but did you see what battlefield did there's so many automatic weapons in battlefield one yeah. and that was world war one yeah they do not need to go down that route we need single yeah. fire and hopefully hopefully the modded controller thing doesn't come back. I'm sure it oh, will. Yeah. I'm sure people will still mod their yeah. controllers and there will be, you know, a quick few. But yeah. hopefully that won't become a big of a thing as it did with World War. World at War. Yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll be an, yeah another big thing with that because I remember World at War, there was tons of glitches and you to get, uh, what was that, mod? Or, it was mod band, so your uh, rate of fire was like severely slowed because you're shooting too fast. So even if you weren't modded and you had like a really fast trigger finger, if it was too fast, it would slow your uh, rate of fire down to where you could only shoot like a bullet like every four seconds. That was, was never you because you had a modded controller. No, 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 no. Yes, no, 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 you no. did. That was no. you had a modded controller, you little cheater. Yeah. Keep that out of your dirty little mouth. I do not have have a I have a scuff controller. Okay, you see this? now scuff. I'm talking about scuff. when World at War was out. You had a modded controller, and I remember because it had like a it didn't <laughs> shoot all at once. It like shot three really fast, and then it waited a, a, a split second and then it shot again or something like that. So it would throw the whatever off the the detection off. Mm. I remember that. No, no, no. You were too young. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I'm excited for this game. I'm excited for E3 when a lot of the multiplayer stuff yep. is going to be released. It said They're in that article about, like, that how... everything multiplayer is coming out at E3. Yeah, E3. So I know they were um, talking about how there's going to be, what was that called? War? Is that what it was called? War? Yes. So where it's going to be like this huge like Ground battlefield War. type map. Yeah. It's Ground War like was with new... a ton of people. Oh, no, no. They said there's a new... Where is this at? Hold on. Call of Duty. Yeah, where is this at? Da, 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 da. I know the zombies are coming back again. Yep. That's cool. What do you think about it, Crisco? I don't think you're that big of a Call of Duty person, are you? No, I, I don't... I don't think I've played Call of Duty since... You're echoing. Sharky. So I am, so um, I am. Since like Xbox 360, maybe like Black Ops 2 is probably the last one I played. So it's, I mean, I haven't played one in probably like four years, six, five years? How long has it been? 
I have no wow. idea. I don't remember. They all run together for me, too. Yeah, I don't know. They just... I feel like I found other games that, like, pique my interest, and I'm not very good at them. So... The Call of Duty ones, so, not the ones that are piquing yeah. your interest. First-person yeah, no. shooters in general are not Chris Not my thing. forte. <laughs> not my forte. But I do like the idea of going back because I feel like the the good memories of the games were all the ones that had more of like the old school feel to it, or just like or just like you know the modern warfare, like kind of like the late two thousand games. Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, like World at War, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2, were like, are the games in my mind that I remember. Yep, same here. I played Modern Warfare 3 too as well, but that wasn't as good as Modern Warfare 2, and I remember it being a huge letdown. Yeah, Modern, Modern Warfare 2 was by far my favorite. Yep. I mean, I still Most played, time played Call of Duty religiously all the way up until now. Right now, I'm, I'm bored of MWR just because it's playing Modern Warfare 4 all over again. So it's like playing the same game that we already played for an entire year, 10 years ago. So. I think with that one, like comparing Modern Warfare to Modern Warfare 2, there's just like, there's so many more classes and stuff that you can, not, not classes, but there's so many more like with more um, kill streaks. I, is there more there's probably more guns there's probably more mm -hmm. perks so like you could always switch it up to different stuff whereas the the couple the only the, the three kill streaks in modern warfare isn't really fun yeah because it's only seven kills I mean I I used to never be I don't think I ever got a uh, nuke in an actual game, I know there were there, you could glitch one v ones where you could get in and you could get all your achievements and stuff mm -hmm. in one v ones, and I that's how I would do like the the nuking stuff and get a lot of headshots because we did that with like my high school friends and everything like that. But shit, where was I going with that? I mean, that's not really cheating. It's not my fault that you could join. Yeah, it's called you could, boosting. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> where the fuck was I going with that? There was more to do in Modern Warfare 2, I feel like. And and yeah. not in the standpoints of, yes, it's always, you know, 5v5 or 6v6 or whatever, but you can be someone different is basically what I'm trying to say. You can have yeah. a different loadout and, you know, you can switch between... You, you can have five favorite you know, loadouts and switch between them in every game. Yeah. I don't know, this... Uh, the World at War 2 or whatever like that. It seems like there's going to be so much more to it now. So that's why I'm excited because they were talking about like you could choose from a variety of different things. Like you'd be infantry or you could be in an armored armored division. So that would you'll have separate different things for each one of those. And then that new multiplayer mode I was talking about is called War Mode. So it's like Battlefield 1 operations and you actually have team-based skirmishes where you're gaining objectives and then uh, it's a huge map where there's going to be like tons and tons of people. They didn't release how many, but we can only assume it's going to be like 40, 50 people in a giant ass map. So I'm excited. I I really honestly hope this is going to save the franchise for Call of Duty. Otherwise, it's just going to be it's they're just going to be done. Uh, Infinite Warfare was pretty much almost the end of it, I think. Then that's why they were firing at tons of people left and right because. They weren't selling as much as what they were supposed to do and it was just a terrible game like i've literally for infinite warfare i've only played one game and i'm never putting that i, I literally i'm just gonna delete it off my xbox so it's terrible i feel yeah. like they're probably hoping the same thing too yeah and i mean i and i think battlefield i feel like battlefield one success had to be a reason that they they went back well like it just made sense because Battlefield One sold pretty well, and that and they they're listening to the to all the gamers though because that's what we've been saying for years. We're like we just want to go back to the roots, the back to normal boots on ground Call of Duty, no crazy crap where it's like you're bouncing all wall running and all this other crazy stuff. We just want normal, what Call of Duty got popular for, and then they went away from it. So. I mean, I don't blame them, though, for going away from it because 
once Titanfall came out, like you, they basically had to try. Yeah. Granted, they tried for too long and they failed too many times, which is why they're in the spot they're in now. But they had to, they had to do something because yeah. Titanfall changed changed first person shooters to a whole new level. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, and, and honestly, the because the, the only thing I could could like the only thing I could think about when I saw the new Call of Duty games was if you add a giant mech that drops in from the sky, you've got Titanfall in Call of Duty. Like that's literally all like all you're missing. Yeah. They also not to mention that they also stole from the Doom kind of. Uh, what do I want to? How do I want to word this? Like the celeb, not not the celebration. I guess it's celebrations. Like how you can like do do dance moves and stuff. That came the from Doom. Or whatever. Yeah, you can do emotes and stuff like that. That came from Doom. Doom yeah. was all about like silly emotes and dancing and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and they copied that shit. But they're good at. Yeah. Well, originally they were not good at copying. They were good at coming up with their own content. Then they decided to copy. All right, let's move but, on. Yeah, I'm cute. Go ahead. Okay, you sure you don't have anything else to say? No, I was Anybody just saying else? there's still no other first-person shooter that's like Call of Duty. Call of Duty is still the top first-person shooter. It's it's hard to, like, once you play Call of Duty, to go to another first-person shooting game because it's completely different. Like, the graphics for Call of Duty... The aiming for Call of Duty and all that stuff is like top of the the like the tippy top of everything, and then all the other games are trying to compete with it. It's just they just need to get their their stuff together and listen to the gamers. And I, I hope they honestly I hope they did with this game. So I'm excited. November third, I will be already have it pre-downloaded. I'm going to pre-order it probably tomorrow or the next day so I can be in the beta. All right. I'll let you guys know. So, oh, you have to buy it to get the beta? Yeah, you, well, you, you have to pre-order it. You have to pre-order it here That's what pretty I soon, I guess, apparently, and to be a part of the beta, which they didn't I'm release when the beta is going to be anyway, so. When can I come and try it? When, oh, they don't know what it is. Never mind. Yeah, they, You just said that. I'll let you know, though. Lol. Um, Lol. Okay, so we're going to stay in the shooter realms. Have you guys seen anything about Sniper Ghost Warrior 3? Because I have. Yes. <laughs> okay. The only thing I've seen from it is the video of him to, of someone just shooting people in the balls for like <laughs> five minutes. Straight. I think it's the only That's video it. I've seen. I watched a streamer, uh, Dark Side, or Dark Side, god damn it. Darkness429. He streamed it the other day. He's been streaming it. Um, he got... Pre like a pre-order. Uh, what? Oh my god! What? What is it called when you can play the game before it actually comes out for everyone else? Early access. Early access. I'm. It's been a long day. I think I've been streaming for like twelve hours. But anyways, um, he got early access, and it was really funny to watch because it it needed the game needed some day one patches for sure. There were like glitches and stuff that were happening, and it was pretty funny. But it looked. I'm not good at sniper games, so I'm. I would never buy this at all. But it. I mean, it looks like a pretty cool sniper game. I don't know what that what that would be like in real life, or if it's it's anything like real life. Probably not, because nothing in video games is really like real life. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it would for someone that likes sniping and likes to do like sniping missions where you have to like take people out, and they're they're other guys uh, that are there that can't see like the dead bodies and stuff or can't see you and or if you're there everyone's alerted those kinds of things I think it would be a cool game to play I don't know those games are kind of cool like cause so like in all the first person shooters there's two things I do one I either rush I'm a hardcore rusher or two I like I don't sit in one spot forever it's like I'm a for sniping or whatever like I move towards slowly towards an objective while I'm still sniping so I, I never camp in one spot so that's the only bad thing about me in sniping but for this game it looks for what I've seen of it it looks really awesome just because you're like messing with the uh, um, what is that called the scope like you're yeah. like but they're like yeah, open the scope. 
Yeah, the range is for the scope or whatever like that. So you see what the range is, and you have to hurry up and mess with the uh, the range for on your actual scope so it lines up. And that way, when you shoot, you're actually hitting the target where you're supposed to be hitting it. So that part's really cool. And I mean, there's nothing more satisfac or satisfactory than hitting a target from like 200 meters, 300, 400 meters. Like uh, when I was playing Battlefield or whatever like that, like one entire day, me and a buddy literally went around the entire map trying to find where we get the farthest sniper shot and i think mine was ended up being like 700 and something meters i think and like you could like any farther i moved back the character disappeared off the freaking screen so and then like you it's so satisfying or satisfying geez i can't talk it's so satisfying to like take a shot from that far and then one shot kill somebody right in the dome especially with the the kill cams for that where it like slow mos and you see it going through the only thing that was weird like on the video that you sent earlier is like one of the shots he took it was going like by his head and then all of a sudden yeah. it was, like through yeah i was like mm -hmm. yeah, that was kind of weird yeah so that I, was I one thing just... that wasn't that cool like it would it would show the the kill cam and like the say the bullet was going for the chin and it would like make the bullet impression in his forehead or something like that when yeah. he was playing. So it's like Or like or that bullet was like actually missing the head. Yeah, like yeah. right at the head and then all of a sudden went in like the side of his face. It was like what did it just curve in midair or something? Um, yeah, I know for that game though, if you like if you see the shots of them getting like hit in like the chest or like actually like in the forehead where it's supposed to be like like you said, like it'll go like almost like a Mortal Kombat style like like brutality or fatality where like it like zooms in like x-rays and like shows the bones breaking and stuff like it gets really really graphic so it's, well, it's, and, that, it's and, cool. then, and that and then when uh when they were killing people like he would, there was two people standing beside each other in like two different groups like he killed the buddy and the guy was literally standing there watching the guy drop dead and just stayed there standing there and didn't move at all whereas in like in a real life type of scenario it alerted people like in battlefield and then they would have been running all over the place, ducking behind, hiding, not going to let a sniper just shoot him again because, oh, well, oh, looky there, my buddy's dead and laying on the ground. I'm just going to stand here in the same spot just watching him bleed. Right. So, I mean, to me, that's that's not very realistic on that part. Can't really teach cool. AI to be human. That's all I have oh, to say. Oh, yeah, but that. I mean, they I mean, they do it for uh, Battlefield and all that other stuff, so I don't understand. Not what... Not Battlefield. Ghost for, Recon. Uh, Tom, Wildlands. For Tom, er, for Wildlands. The, Wildlands. Yeah, Wildlands. <laughs> I'm at Wildlands. Sorry. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know who this was. Who was this developed by? I don't know. This it, is like I, a I don't think it was a, though, so like, right, but it's not triple A. Is this a Tom Clancy's game too? Because it's Ghost something. It's not. No. It's Ghost um, Warrior Three. Who developed this? Gamespot doesn't say. I love it. I feel like it's just, it's one of those games where, like, it does just well enough that they can justify making another one. But, I don't, like... I mean, there can't be a huge following for this. No. Mm -hmm. To me, this is one of those games where, like, if I bought it, like, I would only ever buy it if it was on sale. And it's one of those games where I would probably sit down and play it for like two missions at a time because if you do have to be like that intensely stealthy or else it just makes you like I'm sure you can beat the game if people are alerted and they're like coming after you but I'm sure it's much more difficult and a lot less fun to do it that way you do have to be that intensely stealthy like I feel like it would just be really tiring to play that game so you'd have to be yeah. like super careful the entire time it's developed by CI Games they're a Polish international pub publisher and developer and it's mm. Is this the game looks fun? the game looks really good though. I'll give them that. Like yeah. the game looks top notch for the most part. There's I mean there's quite a few sniper games out there. Like I know like Sniper Elite Four just came out and that one's like hardcore graphic. Like you actually see the bullet like when the bullet when people shoot or whatever like, and goes in their forehead, it goes like an X ray vision. You can see the bullet going through the head. Is that the, the game that I'm thinking of? Yeah. I think so. That's yeah, that's yeah. Sniper Elite okay. Four. <clears throat> so here's a thing about uh, Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 at Target, it is already forty nine ninety nine. dollars uh, That makes sense. Yeah. But at Best Buy and Walmart, it's still $60. It'll be short. Though. It got a 5.5 on IGN, a 6 on Steam, and a 5 at GameStop. 
So it's about a five and a half out of the three. Yeah. A mediocre. Yeah. Like I said, it's a game that I would pretty much... Like, for me, I compare this, although, like, the gameplay and everything is nowhere near the same. I compare this game to, like, the last Assassin's Creed game that came out. Like, I just now bought it, and I was a huge fan of that series. I just now bought it, like, a couple weeks ago, because it was on sale for $20. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, this game would be the exact same. Like, I would maybe pick it up, but it would it would never be at, like, full, full price. Yeah, I would never buy this for full price. Yeah, no. I agree. Thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, these these kill animations look kind of funny. I'm watching them right now, and they uh, they do look kind of wonky. Another thing, though, with those is because it, going back to Injustice, there's only so many times where I want to watch a, myself get a headshot and in that slow motion. Like after a while, that kind of gets boring. Like every, it was, when I was watching Darkness play, it was every single headshot. He got one of those That's slow-mo things. things. Yeah. And that like, that can get really yeah. annoying, especially if like a mission and you get all the way to the last part of it and you die and you have to start over. Like, I don't want to sit there and watch yeah, headshots over and over again. Yeah. Right, it just keeps the pace of the game so slow. I guess that that's one thing of why I'm not a sniper, because I'm not patient enough for those kinds of things. Okay, so I retract everything I said about this game being top-notch graphics. I was thinking of Sniper Elite. <laughs> yeah, that I, game yeah. looks top-notch. This game yeah. is like its less successful little brother. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right, next subject. We're, I, I, we're not going to talk about this for too long. Um, but Razer came out with a new, uh, gaming wireless mouse, and let me tell you one thing about gaming wire wireless mouses in general, you are never going to have a good enough connection if you don't have a wire. You are always going to have, like, a, even, even the smallest, you know, 0. 0.2 seconds or whatever delay, but even in those... Games like Siege, you can't have that. You're going to die. You, you you need to be as fast as possible. You lose the advantage. Yeah, you lose an advantage when you have that, you know, microsecond delay. And that's the same thing that goes with, like, ping-based games, where Siege is a ping-based game where it your reaction time is, one, is only enough. It, it also has to do with, you know, what your delay is to the server. Boy, and then you, if you add up all the other stuff, so like you, you were talking about, so you have your reaction time, so it depends on if your reaction times, how quick it is, and then you have to add, if you have wireless mouse, now you have a delay from that, and then if you have not the greatest monitor, now you have a delay from that. Yep, that too. You're, you're, yeah, so all that stacks up, and then now you're, now you're looking at a significant delay, you're like, well, how did he turn around and all of a sudden kill me? And you're like, well, that's why, because that's why the up. elites have really good equipment because they're losing all that delay. So. Can you guys hear that? Yes. Sir. Yeah. There's an ambulance. Are they coming to get you? No, it's an ambulance. Are you okay? I'm okay. Oh, there's a fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> Saving lives. Wow. I'm CPR certified. I can give it to you through the camera if you need to. I am not. <laughs> You're on your own. Yeah, me neither. Alright, that, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about it. It's just, go wired. Don't If you're going to game and you want to be the best that you can be, go wired. That saves you money, too. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. Like, mine was... The price me. point if you can you put this up, can wired. you can you put the picture of this up? Yeah. Kenny? Hold on. Yeah. It looks really cool. It looks really good. I'll yeah. give him that. Like But I mean so do all razor that. like if you look at mine, it's a pretty it's a I like mine. I think it looks pretty cool. And it has five buttons. Six counting if you count the roller as a button. It has left, right, two on the side, 
You can click the roller and you can roll the roller. And I think that's some some people, you know, when they game, they want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the side. They can practice or whatever to make it so where they're clicking the right buttons and you know it's it's more in a controlled space. I'm not like that. I'm dumb, especially because I have to put my left hand on on the uh, keyboard and my right hand on the mouse. I can't like click those buttons. My mind doesn't work like that. But yeah, I mean it's it's like the same same thing as mine, except it has some more aesthetic things, and you've got two more buttons on the top, and again, it's wireless. So yeah, I Razer does a good job at designing their stuff, and I don't think you need like a super expensive mouse to be really good. It just definitely has to be wired. Yeah. I agree. And I don't... They're, they're like saying that it has, you know, like a, a 5 gigabyte the launch head uses a 2... See, it even uses a 2.4 gigahertz frequency, which is the same thing as your Wi-Fi. And yeah. Wi-Fi has gone to 2.4 or a 5 gigahertz frequency where the 5 gigahertz is faster and that's what I'm always on, especially if I'm within 10, 10 feet. So it's not even going to be the fastest. Hmm. And another thing with wireless, you have to worry about battery life too. Yeah, so you yes. can, like, in the, if you forgot to charge it or put a new battery or whatever like that, then you're in the middle of a game and now your mouse dies on you or you don't have to worry about that with wired. So. Yeah, and I, I had my Xbox controller, I had been using batteries for it and I mean, it's, it's my, actually, no, I can't say that because mice are a lot better when it comes to that. Like they don't, the, the battery, well, at least the ones in mine, I don't know if like they, more buttons and stuff and higher tech than the ones that I've had it probably factors into a faster battery life. Mm -hmm. a, yeah. A faster battery or a shorter battery life, I think is the correct term to use. Yeah. But it's not. It's never something like an Xbox controller where they go through batteries like every every three hours of gameplay. Dude, I've, had a, yeah. I've had a I've had a battery on my in my mouse since the day I bought it, like two years ago, and I think I've changed the battery like. This Granted, is the you just cut out. I don't play. He said three times. If you if you can't here. if you can't read lips, he said three times. <laughs> Am I, am I muted? No, you're still good. You just cut out when you said three times. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, so in, like, two years, I probably only changed it, like, three times. And, granted, I don't play nearly that much on my computer. But do you but, ever I mean, turn it off? Regardless of, Is the question. Um, I turn it off, like, if I'm not playing, but there are times where, like, I know I've gone, like, days without turning it off. Yeah. And I mean, it, it just, it, it, I mean, they're good about it if they're not being used, they're good about kind of like sleeping and not using any battery. I would say the battery, it says the battery life for this is 24 hours with the lighting on. And, uh, oh, and yeah, then it, obviously it comes with the charging too. cable. So 24 hours with the lighting on. Oh, it's a rechargeable battery. Off. You don't have to get like AAA batteries or AA batteries? No, yeah, That's it's rechargeable. Good. It comes okay. with the, it comes with the USB charging cable. So basically you end up just leaving it plugged in anyway. Is what yeah, doing. probably. Maybe. I mean, Which the only that thing point, I can just of, get a that, fucking yeah, plugged in right, mouse. Just get, yeah, just get the wired at that point because there's no use. Because then all you are is just killing the battery. So then when you unplug it, your your battery expectancy is crap. I think the only thing I can think of as like as far as like who would want this is like me, for example. One because I'm not like super hardcore, so I don't really care about that stuff. But also to, um, you don't have a desk. I don't. Yeah, I don't have a desk. So like, I sit on my couch and I play off my TV I remember because that's like days. the best setup I could come up with without like hibernating in my room, basically. So it's like for me, it would make sense only because I sit far enough away that I would need it. But I also can't people... justify spending one hundred and forty dollars on a couch. Yeah, or people that travel a lot or have like gaming laptops. I could see that be okay. I mean, for like your home nerd station like mine, I would want are definitely 100% wired. Even though I have cats that like to chew wires, I would still get a, a wired one. 
they don't really do it anymore because they've gotten sprayed and time outed enough to where they don't chew them but they used to yeah. I've gone through multiple charging cables you see why these black things are on my charging cables that's because Grayson there he is he likes to chew cable he used to like to chew cables mm. all right so next this is this is actually pretty cool I forgot that I had put this in here at all um, Phil Spencer who is basically the boss of Xbox He's in charge of Xbox. It was talking about, in an interview, he was talking about a Netflix style of thing for games. Oh, can I help you? More, you more specifically, it? though, it was a Netflix style thing for... Xbox. Games, but for story games. Oh. Not so much multiplayer oh, okay. games. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that makes sense. He went a little bit more in in depth explaining his his logic, which was so. If you look at like most games nowadays, all have either like a perpetually online component, which I'm glad they kind of got away from that this like this past year and a half in gaming as a whole. Like I know like if, like thinking back to like Need for Speed, the game that came out in like 2015. It was supposed to be like their reboot of like the Underground series, kind of, but it was perpetually online. The internet connection, you couldn't play, or at least at first they added in like a solo mode after that. But that was the big trend in like 2015 and like the beginning of 2016, was having these games where like they always required an online connection. So now that they've gotten away from that, basically what he was saying is that like the games that do have a really good online presence, like a Call of Duty, um, like a like first person shooters, like and then the cooperative games and things like that, like, the developers stay updating. Like, they stay relevant to that game. They keep the servers online for a lot longer. But, like, a single-player game, like, most of us, we spend $60 on it. And, and sure, you might dump 30 hours into it, but once you beat it, you're probably not going back to it for a really long time. Unless it's Skyrim. True. But even still, I mean, think about it, like... But even still, like, you may put more than 30 hours into it, but once you beat the game at first or, like, have discovered what you want to, like, you're probably not going to play that game again for a while, and if you do, you're probably going to restart. Yeah. So it, what he was saying is that it's more justified having some sort of, like, game share for these story games where developers can pour their heart and soul into these stories, and they don't have to worry about maintaining them over long periods of time because they know, like, people are literally just going to hop on bunch of time into the story and then they're never going to play it. Isn't it called like Game Pass? It's going to be something like you you have to put like, I think it's like going to be like, they said it was going to be like 5 or $10 or something like that. You have to pay a month and then it's like Netflix so you go in and you get your game or whatever like that. You pick it out on the app or whatever like that, the Xbox app and then uh, you play that game until you beat it and then you can go to the next game and continue on and then it's like a sub subscription thing you continue so it's I mean, literally at a five Netflix or $10, and games. I was going to say, I mean, at a 5 or $10 price point, I'm all about it. Yeah, I think they said $10. Like, he was thinking it would be like $10 or something like that. But, but is, it, mean, is it like a Gamefly thing where you can only have one game at a time or can you just go in and play whatever game you want to? That's what, they, yeah, that's what it would need to be. There are certainly... Some sort of limit to it there has to be yeah I was saying, but that's it has what, to be that's, more than one game it's still in testing right now like it's for the xbox the xbox testers are still testing it right now so i mean it'll all depend but i'm sure they're not just gonna be like oh you can go and pick like a limited unlimited amount of games i'm sure it'll be like one or two or something like that or but maybe you'll have is, a time frame it's gonna be like it's it, it, i guess i'm am i'm de am i del delving into the netflix thing too much where they're aren't going to have all of the, every single game on there. It's not going to be for every single game. No, it's just so, going to be for the more just plain single player story based games. But I see but like I I don't know. I I I this is one of those things where like on paper it sounds really good. Probably yeah. not. But I need I need to see how it actually plays out yeah. because also too if you look at it from a a big budget gaming perspective like 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 Bioware that spends years making Mass Effect Andromeda, they certainly don't want to give their game to a uh, service that's going to stream it for five or ten dollars a month. Like, sure, a bunch of people might sign up for it, but they're not going to see the return 
they're not going to see the return on all the money and time that they put into the game. Like they want that game purchased hard copy or or digital, where they get the full sixty dollars for it. That's that's my thoughts on it. Is that see those AAA games, but it's going to be like Netflix, where it's like down the line a few months or. Because I don't know, I feel like games really, for the most part, especially like that, probably aren't relevant for more than like six months. Does that sound about right? Well, and then that would be like, so if we're, if they're continuing on like the Netflix thing, so like each major provider like Fox and TNT and all that stuff like that, um, to have their shows on Netflix, Netflix has to pay them some sort of uh, reimbursement for allowing people to stream it from their site. So if that's what Xbox is going to do, is probably what they're going to do is, so they have the subscriptions, so they're getting like $10 from everybody that's um, involved in it or whatever like that each month, and then part of that will go out to, to some of the companies of all the games or whatever, like they'll get a share of whatever it is over their entire um, assets that they get from it, I guess. But I mean, like, like my, my logic on it though is that like, like for the for the smaller games it makes sense but for the bigger games like like you want you want people to spend because think about it if even if six people are paying ten dollars a month mm -hmm. to play your game like you're still not seeing the full sixty dollars you're seeing i mean you might like and granted they, they're going to pay you for the game so that they can stream it but at the same time like from their standpoint like they'd probably rather just see sixty dollars in their like in their pocket every time someone buys it. But I don't think it's going to be, like, games that have just came out. It's going to be, like, yeah. older games that well, they're not thinking, $60 anymore. Right. Or maybe they're, like, only to, $5, and maybe they were only released at $5. No, I was thinking more to, like, Sharky's point, how he said, like, think about, like, the TV shows, right? Like, take, uh, like, take any show that's running currently on TV, uh, on Netflix, right? Like, they don't get the, that season until the next game or until the next season comes out for the most part they usually give you just enough time that if you binge watch it for like a week before the season you could like be up to date on the show it's kind of what we would run into where you're going to see games that they're i mean they're going to to get the big budget games at least they're going to have to wait until these games have like completely eclipsed their their like relevancy and their like revenue that's true yeah, at all. Like, they have to be to the point where, like, they're no longer, like, a viable product for that company to get the streaming service. That's, that's my thoughts on it. But Yeah, I agree with that part. I, they'll probably wait a little while to where, like, the peak of everybody buying the games, and they're kind of, like, on the downhill to where now they're seeing all the revenue go down a little bit more, and they're like, okay, now we want to continue our revenue. We're going to throw it into Game Pass, and then we'll just continue our revenue that way. Because, I mean, if you have, like, 60,000 people or whatever like that giving 10 bucks a month or whatever like that, and then they're getting a share of that every month, I mean, that'll, that'll add up quickly. Yeah, so. and especially for games, like you said, that, like, they're, like, past their relevancy stage. Like, they're not making money off those games anymore anyway. So, yeah. to them, yeah, it's, and then it's they get, no, they get pulled, no law. They get pulled off the store shelves anyway, so it's once newer games comes out. So, I mean... At that point, nobody really knows about the game unless they like heard about it or it was that popular of a game. Yeah. So, I would definitely be interested in signing up, especially if it is going to have that low price point. But like where he said, he says you'll have things like Zelda and Horizon Zero Dawn that'll come out and they don't, and they'll do really well. Like, does that mean that they're going to have that? Like, obviously, like Xbox isn't going to see either of those games, but I think that it's more the point he's trying to make. Like, are we going to see those games in that service? right away or like or is that going to be something that it's a game that comes six months down the road when you know so can you fight off that urge to spend sixty dollars on it if you want it now which for certain games i feel like it's not most people are gonna have a hard time doing. all right we're this podcast i think is almost like an hour and a half so far so we're gonna move on and we're gonna kind of <laughs> quickly go through these last couple of points um, For Honor is adding more maps and heroes in May. And you know what I think about that? Next subject. Yeah, exactly. I was just add it. Um, uh, no input on For Honor. It was a good try, but not, not that good of a game. And I don't think DLC is going to save it either. 
Um, let's talk about more, six more Xbox One backwards compatibility games. I'm not even going to go through all of them. The only thing that really matters is Dead Space 1, 2, and 3 are all backwards compatible now. And I can't wait to play them all. Hopefully they come out with like a bundle to where you can buy all three of them at once. Because I don't... I think I have Dead Space 2, but I don't have one... No, I have three. I think they will, only for the reason that it's... So it's Dead Space 1, 2, 3, and there's like this... It's called Dead Space Extension. I just have two. It's like a prequel to Dead Space 2, I guess, or something. Like, I was just looking into it briefly. That's also available. I think it was bad. So I would hope they do some sort of expansion. Uh, or, like, or Collection. like group bundle. What I'm also secretly hoping is that this is a prelude, because the one thing Xbox has been really good at is making a lot of games backwards compatible that either new games are coming out with, or, like, new games are being made, or, like, it's got a major nostalgia factor. So I'm hoping it's the first one, because I would love to see a new Dead Space game. Because they're fun, and they're terrifying. Yeah, I agree. I would love to see Dead Space 4, but... I, they would have to go. They would. They would have to do a Mass Effect thing and and get someone else. It has to be someone else because the other guy's story is just it's it's done. Yeah, no, and, and I think they would. But like the like the concept of the game is would be the same. Obviously, like I'm I'm even cool if they wanted to just do like another dude trapped in space on a ship with right. like with evil aliens that are like like just terrifying. I'd be okay with that. I'd be sold. Um, quick note here, the other games are all Compella's branded games, Hunting Expeditions, Dangerous Hunts 2013, Alaska Adventures, and Survival Shadows of Katmai. How do they, how do they keep making these games? Do people actually play? Well, I guess it's, this is backwards compatible, so it, it would have yeah, been played. Already made. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I, is Cabela still a game? I have no idea. I, let's look. See if and Call of Duty Black Ops back. came out. Black Ops Two is backwards. That was yeah, that was a recent yeah. one. Which I think that was do Modern Warfare Two. They're totally going to back are going to remaster Modern remaster. Warfare Two. I think they will because that's the only good one that they haven't done on backwards compatibility. Everything else is backwards compatibility. World at War. Yeah. Black Ops. Black Ops Two so. now. I don't think they've done four, which would make sense because they remastered that one. Also. Yeah, they yeah, they, they, they remastered that one. Remastered. Uh, what was I going to say? Most recent Cabela's game. It's probably like Big Game Hunter or something like that. Most yeah. of Cabela's video I mean, games. I don't know. The only thing I can think is that they make like mobile games at this point. 2014. Uh, 2014 was their last game. Mm. Yeah, so it's probably honestly that game that they just made that but if you look at this, this list, they started in 98, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then there's like uh, 4 by 4 off-roads, there's three of those, there's three ultimate deer hunting series, there's two regular deer hunting series, whatever the difference is for that, uh, there's... Three, six, six dangerous hunt like series. Big bass hunter. Two grand slam hunt series. Two outdoor adventure series and others. There's what eight others. One of them's African <laughs> Safari Sportsman Challenge. Like they they made so many games, and I just don't understand how they made any money off of them. I'm pretty, I, I would, you gotta think that, that for the most part, like, they got, like, on the 360 or something, or, like, a PS3, like, they figured out a good, like, graphical level that they were content with, just started, like, reskinning the game, yeah, or whatever so. it was. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of, because, like, I feel like if you're hunting deer in one game, like, you're still hunting deer in another game, like, what are they gonna do, make it, like, more hunty, like... Right. Like there's a really shitty way to Boy. term it, but like, like what are you gonna do? Like you channel your inner like, bear grills, like, duh. <laughs> just go and fucking bear your hand. I'm pretty sure he made a game it. though. He he is in a video game. I've seen. Yes, it's on um, two best friends play. They play it and it's hilarious. Uh, it's got to be fantastic. 
Well, those guys are really funny too. All right, let's move on to our uh, next thing. This is just kind of like cool and is honestly surprising. Lord of the Rings Online has been on for 10 years now. It celebrated its 10th anniversary. What day is this? Um, looks like the 25th on the 25th of April. So like five days ago, six days ago, it was on the 24th. And I think that's cool. I've The only experience I've ever had with Lord of the Rings online is I downloaded the free version. I, honestly, I want to say when it came out or when it went free to play. I don't remember if it, you had to like buy it at first or if it was automatically free to play. But it was like as soon as it was free, I downloaded it on my parents' shitty laptop or computer, whichever it was. I don't really remember. And I played like 13 seconds of it because I was honestly getting maybe like four frames a second. It was terrible. <laughs> and I never played it again because we never had a computer that could handle it. But I think it's still oh, cool. No. It's still cool. Oh, I could, I could definitely do it, but I'm not really interested. I don't have time for another World at War. Or, yeah. Yeah. World of Warcraft slash Star Wars The Old Republic slash kind of Diablo game. I don't have time for that. And nobody got And it's like, that. I'm pretty sure what I remember is you aren't Aragon, but like the first mission you fight by the side of Aragon. It's like, fuck that. I want to I wanna play as Aragon if I'm going to play in Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings and I'm Star Wars are different because Star I'm Wars, you want to be in Star Wars. But Lord of the Rings, you want to be those characters because they're badasses. Right. That's why the the movie games were so successful. Right. Because they just took all the characters that everyone loved and just threw you right into it. What were you going to say, Sharky? Oh, sorry. Oh, no. I said, I, I remember I played it for, I think I played it for like a week or something like that. And I was like an elf or something. I remember shooting bows and arrows at orcs. So... But I don't. I don't remember it being that interesting. Or maybe I had a crappy computer at that time, and I was getting like six frames for a second. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember it being real hard to play. I think that was back when I was playing the WoW, and I was on that little mini computer. How'd you get more than six frames in WoW? I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, that was too long. You know what? I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna download it. At some point this week, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Ah, uh, fine. Cause it's free to play. Yeah. It's been free to play for a really long time. We'll do it. Let's do it. Okay. Do last. It. Let's let's wrap this podcast up that's been going on for like an hour and a million minutes. <laughs> with Titanfall Two is releasing their first. Free DLC called A Glitch in the Frontier. It's coming out in May. I, does it have an actual date for when it comes out? There's a gameplay trailer. Uh, GameSpot did so not without say the actual reading, date. Without reading this article initially, I was really hoping that the title was going to be like... It was going to be this game mode where it's just going to be kind of like a satirical game mode for their... like. Or the gameplay where, like, instead of you being a pilot and running around, like, you were this, like, little titan that ran around, and then you called in a pilot that, like, dropped down <laughs> from the spaceship. That and you hilarious. <laughs> like, I think, like, like, I thought that was, like, because, I mean, think about it, the titles, like, Glitch in the Frontier. I was like, oh, what better way to be a glitch than, like, to have everything back? Like, yeah, that would be Not funny. the controls, obviously, but, like, have little titans, like, running around where, like, like, same weapons and everything, and then you just get these, like, titan-sized pilots that are that just, like... <laughs> Just absolutely unstoppable. I thought that'd be really funny. That would be funny. You you should contact them and and like copyright that so they have to buy it off of you. Hey, hey guys, I got an idea that's way better than the one that you just put out. Yeah. I might play this for like a day and then I'm gonna get bored with it again because D DL again Titanfall DLC is not gonna save this game. And I I take that back. This game, it, it, it is in need of being saved, but it's not going to be saved. But it was a great game when it originally came out. But then it's like, there's there's just not enough to do. And it's not that like heart-pounding 
clutch situation kind of thing. It's just like you you do shit over and over again. Yeah, it was. I mean, they are they are really fun games. I'll give them that. Like the gameplay with like I remember this was the Titanfall One was the was a launch title for Xbox One, mm -hmm. and that was the one that that was the game that came digitally for my Xbox, and so that was the first game I ever played, and it was mind blowing. Like, yep. It was the coolest game I'd ever played for like a week. I got other games, yep, and kind of forgot about it. But for that one week, it was it was something special. I'll give them that. Yeah. I'll yeah. I'll try it. I'll see what the new maps are. Cause I've the the thing that drives me nuts about Titanfall is I'm actually good at Titanfall. I don't know how I'm not like good at any other shooting games. But like I poop on people in Titanfall. But nobody watches it on Twitch. So like I just don't waste my time with it. Yeah, and a DLC like this, unless it's unless it is Titans versus Titans, dropping in pilots, threat pending. Um, unless it's that, like I don't think you're gonna see a lot of people like hop on to play that. No, that game either. All right, I think that's gonna be it for this week. We're signing off. We'll see you again next week. I'm, I'm going to make a promise that we're going to see you again next week. I think what the biggest problem is, is I don't take the time to, like, gather the information that we're going to talk about until, like, an hour before Last the podcast. <laughs> and that's usually what ends up cram, fucking us over. I'm trying to cram all my reading in into, yeah, like, the last so 30 minutes. I'm going to... But today, I did it differently. I woke up early. I, it's a Sunday, and I didn't... And I woke up before noon. I woke up at 11. <laughs> And Proud for that first hour of just being up, I laid in bed and I went through Twitter and I went on GameSpot oh, and I went on totally. Games Radar and I went on IGN and I picked all the good stuff and I sent it to our co-hosts and they had time to process it, I, even though I didn't read any of these things because I never did. I still <laughs> read it at about two hours ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to be, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's no longer we're, I'm sticking to this schedule I'm going to wake up at 11 o'clock on every Sunday we'll see about that it, it pissed Maria <laughs> off though because I had to set an alarm and it woke her up but well, oh yeah sorry oh. I guess that's what you get for sleeping with another human oh. being next time you just sleep on the couch no <laughs> we do have two beds though but yeah, that's true. The sun would definitely wake me up in in the second bedroom for sure. Way before I'm just a lot of excuses. Whatever. A yeah, lot of just, excuses. I mean, I'm still gonna do it. I don't care if it makes her mad or not. I'm still gonna do it. Hmm. Sorry, Maria. All right, let's call it a day. All right. See you, hey Chris. Go out. What we do here is go back, 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 back.